What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next video. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take each of these expressions here, we're gonna factor them by grouping. So there's gonna be a bunch of different scenarios here, different levels of difficulty. I wanted to factor a bunch of different expressions by grouping so you could see all of the different types of questions you can potentially run into. So starting with number one, we got 15x to the four minus nine x to the three minus 35x plus 21. So with grouping, what you do, is you first factor the greatest common factor out of the first two terms. So 15x to the four minus nine x to the three. Notice that from those two, what we could take out is a three x to the three, right? Three goes into 15 and nine, and then x to the four, x to the three, x to the lowest exponent, which is the three. And when we take out the three x to the three from these two, what you could do you could actually divide both of these by 3x to the 3. So notice this would be uh, 5x. And then this here would end up being the x to the 3's cancel out. 9 divided by 3 is just 3. And then we got the minus in between. So we'd end up with 5x minus 3 like that. And then from these two, minus 35x plus 21, what we could take out from both of these is a minus 7. So we take out a minus seven, negative 35x divided by minus seven gives us positive five x, and then 21 divided by negative seven gives us minus three, right? So when you're doing the factoring by grouping, basically these two brackets every time should be the same. So if they're not the same, then you know you did something wrong, or sometimes you'll see you'll have to rearrange the expression first before factoring it. There's gonna be cases that we're gonna run into like that here as well in this video. In this first case, you didn't have to do that. Right? It was already arranged for you in a way where those two brackets are gonna be the same. So now you take these two brackets out and you'd be left with three X to the three minus seven. And then what you want to do is you want to further check if you can factor any of the remaining brackets. So notice what the 5x minus 3, you can't factor that. And then over here, you can't factor this any further. This could have been potentially a difference of cubes, but you can't take the third root of 3 or the third root of 7. That's not going to give you an integer. right? So this here ends up being the final answer for number 1. So then moving on to number two, same process. So out of these first two terms, notice we could take out an M and we'd be left with X plus Y. And then from these two, we could take out an N and we'd be left with X plus Y. So it's good, we got that same bracket. Now you could take the bracket out and then you're left with M plus n. And then again, you wanna do a final check. Can you factor further? Notice the x plus y you can't factor further. The m plus n you can't factor further either. Then moving on to number three, we got 2xy plus 21 plus 3y plus 14x. So I'm gonna just split these off here, do all the work here. So notice that with number three, What's gonna happen is, notice from these first two, we can't really factor anything, and we can't factor anything from these next two. So this is an example of a question where you're first gonna have to rearrange things. And there's different ways you can rearrange it. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, sometimes you gotta play around with it first to see which arrangements work. I'm gonna put the 3y instead of the 21 here, and then I'll put the 14x, and then I'll put the 21 like that right so we took this and rearranged it and now notice that when we factor notice from these two I could take out a y and I'll be left with 2x plus 3 and then notice from these two I could take out a 7 and I'll be left with 2x plus 3 like that and then from these two I could take out a 2x plus 3 and then we would have the y plus the seven, right? And then notice two X plus three, Y plus seven, we can't factor that further. So that ends up being the answer to number three. Let me box these off here. 
right? What about number four? So with number four, we got 3x squared y squared minus 3y squared minus 12x squared plus 12. So let's see what happens when we factor out of these first two. Notice from these two, we could take out a three. We could also take out a y squared. So when I do that, this would be the next line. We'll have three y squared. Notice we'll have an x squared left here. And then we'll have a minus one because we took out that whole expression right there, that three y squared. Then from these two, notice we could take out a minus 12. From, just as a heads up, the reason why we're taking out a minus 12 and not a positive 12. So from these two expressions, when you're doing factoring by grouping, you're always gonna be taking out the sign that's here in front of that first term of the last two, right? So notice here it was a positive, so we took out a positive seven, but here we have a minus 12. So we'll, we would take out whatever factor we take out, it would be negative. In this case, it's gonna be minus 12, but it could be any number any variable, but that sign there is gonna be the same. So we take out a minus 12 and we'd be left with x squared minus one, like that. And then from here, what we can do is we could take out the x squared minus one and we'd be left with three y squared minus 12, like that. And actually, now what you want to do, you want to check if you could factor further, and we can factor further. We could take out a 3 from this bracket. Actually, what I just realized is what we should have done initially is should have checked what we could factor out from everything. So I'm going to finish this question, but then I'm going to redo this question. I'm going to show you how to do it a different way because I just realized from we could take out a 3 from everything that coefficient. So because we didn't do that at this step, now what we got to do is we got to take out a three from this bracket. So if we take out a three from this bracket, I'm going to put it in front, we'll have x squared minus one. And then here we'll have y squared minus four, like that. All right, so I just took out a three from here. And then notice that these two brackets, they're a difference of squares. So the x squared minus one is x plus one, x minus one. The y squared minus four is y minus two y plus two, like that. And so that ends up being the final answer. Now, if we were to initially take out the three, that's probably what I would have done. Usually, I just didn't notice it. I would have took out the three from everything and we'd have an x squared y squared minus y squared minus, um, 4x squared plus 4 like that. And then we could factor this by grouping. So notice we could take out then a y squared and we'd have x squared minus 1. Then from here we could take out a minus 4, x squared minus 1. Um, and then we could take out an x squared minus 1 uh, from these two terms. And we'd be left with y squared minus 4. And notice that we end up getting to this point, right? And then that's gonna factor into that exact same answer. So that's another thing you could have done. You could, could have took out a three initially from everything. You should always check because this one wasn't too bad because it was just a three, but sometimes you'll have like variables, the same variable everywhere and until you factor out that whole thing first with that variable, like let's say this was like, here we had an x to the three, then we had an x, then we had an x to the three here, and then we had another x. Then taking out that three x would make things a lot easier, right? So even though here it wasn't as big of a deal to take out that three initially, sometimes it can uh, really make a difference in the question if that factor that you're taking out from everything is fairly large, fairly complex. All right, so just be on the lookout for that. And then moving on to number five, we got four x to the six plus nine minus four x squared minus nine x to the four. So notice this is another example where we're going to have to rearrange this initially because 
Notice from these two, we can't really take anything out from the 4x, the 6, and the 9. From these two, we could take out an x squared. That's not going to help us too much. We would end up just having 4 minus 9x squared. It's not going to be the same as this. So another example where this has to be a rearrange. And the way we can rearrange it, um, I think we could actually do it in two different ways. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the 4s together and then the 9s together. So I'm going to write this as 4x to the 6 minus 4x squared. And then we'll have minus 9x to the 4 plus 9, like that. And then notice when we do the factoring by grouping from here, we could take out a 4x squared. And we'd be left with x to the 4 minus 1. And then from these two, we could take out a minus 9. And we'd be left with x to the 4 minus 1. And then notice we could take out an x to the 4 minus 1. And then we'd have a 4x squared minus 9 left, like that. But then notice we could factor further. You want to check if these remaining brackets, you could factor further. So notice the x to the 4 minus 1, that's a difference of squares. That'd be x squared minus 1, x squared plus 1. And then this is a difference of squares too. This factors into 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3, like that. And then we're not fully done yet either. The x squared minus 1 is the difference of squares. We could factor that. The x squared plus 1 we can't further factor, but the x squared minus 1 we can. That factors into x minus 1, x plus 1. And then to make it look a little nicer, I'm going to put these two, since they have a degree of 1, with these two, since they have a degree of 1. This is a degree of 2 here. And this x squared plus 1, we can't factor that further. So we'll have... 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3, and then we'll have uh, x squared plus 1. All right, so this one, number 5, ends up having five different factors. All right, so sometimes you may continue to factor a bunch of times. Notice we had to factor twice. There was two difference of squares to factor. And then finally, um, number six, notice here, this is going to have to be rearranged because from these two, we could take out an x, so we'd have a 3x plus 11, but then from these two, we could take out a y, and then we'd have 11 minus 3y, right? Or even if we took out a minus y, then we'd have 3y minus 11, but this and this bracket are not the same, right? So that's not going to help us too much. So what we got to do is rearrange this. And like I did in number five, I'm going to put the coefficients together. So we'll have, so this is going to be number six. We'll have the 3x squared minus the 3y squared like that. And then we'll have the 11x plus 11y, like that. So notice from the first two, we could take it, uh, we could take out a three. And then from these two, we could take out an 11. But then notice that these two brackets are not the same, right? Usually we want these brackets to be the same. But this is a unique case because this bracket here, this remaining bracket, can actually factor, that's a difference of squares, into x minus y, x plus y. And what happens now? Now notice that these two terms have the same bracket that we could take out. So this one was really unique in terms of we did this portion, but then this bracket was able to factor further into these two, right? And then once it factored, now we have that same bracket in both expressions that we could take out. So now we could take out an x plus y, and we'd be left with three bracket x minus y plus 11. And then this you can simplify further. You could distribute the three. We'll have 3x minus 3y plus 11. And then that doesn't simplify any further, doesn't factor any further. x plus y, you can't factor further. 
right? So this number six ends up factoring into that. So that's just a unique case. Usually you won't run into something like that when you're dealing with factoring by grouping, but just in case thought I would throw it in there, right? So factoring by grouping, watch out if you have to rearrange stuff, watch out if you have to factor something initially from everything, like we mentioned in one of the previous uh, expressions. And yeah, just watch out for all these different cases that you can run into.